So to... excited to be on with Maggie and Moose. <laughs> well, we're Sounds happy like to have summers. you. Sounds like summers. Yes. Summers. Uh, I think we're past sixty seconds here. Okay. Is All right, summers, mystery. Is it yeah, you know you have it. Yay! Oh, Yay! it's like a mitzvah. What is it? Look at this. Uh, What's going on, Steve? How desperate was Monzo today? <laughs> no, I mean, he, he couldn't, he, there were two or three people that backed out on him at the last minute. So here I am doing the laundry at home, and he gives me a call. Could he help us out? And I said, he says to me, could you be the mystery guest for today? I said, I'm a mystery to the people who listen to me. No, no, no. Oh, come no, on, no. Yes, they, yes. Anyway, <laughs> I say it's a pleasure. I've been listening to you guys. Nice interview with David Lennon. And uh, we need to get the, the sports. And Mark uh, starts off the show hating the one and si- one uh, through 16 with the seating like uh, an NB and like an NCAA regional, you guys are always a good listen. <laughs> oh, we appreciate it, Steve. How are how are you? Everyone uh, safe? Everyone good? You all right? Yeah, thank goodness. Yeah, I mean, uh, and I wear my mask twenty four seven, and uh, even when I'm getting dressed, I, I stand six feet away from the mirror so I don't <laughs> infect the mirror. So I'm doing all of the of the right things. But I, I mean, I go out. I mean, but uh, always with the mask and uh, trying to keep my distance, of course. Well, Steve, you know, you are, you know, you've been, you've seen a lot. You've been through a lot, you know, a legendary voice here at the fan kind of encapsulate everything that, you know, uh, as a broadcaster in this city, what we've gone through here for the last two and a half months. Oh, yeah. Well, sure. You know, and, uh, and again, over the course of time, you, you know, and we'll get through this too. And, you know, whether it's, um, you know, Hurricane Sandy, whether it's 9-11, I mean, obviously, uh, and it's therapy, as you guys know all too well, too. You know, it might be therapy for the listeners to have familiar voices, you know, around during uh, terrible times, but it's also therapy for all of us, too. So it works both ways, uh, those of us on one side of the microphone, those of everybody else on the other side that listens uh, to what programs we do, and it works both ways. I mean, it's therapy for us. They help us get through it. We help them get through it. And so it's, it's wonderful and that we're so fortunate in a way to be doing what we're doing even in the best of times, and if we're helping e- even one person during a terrible time, well, that is the most rewarding uh, thing that we can do. Absolutely. And Steve Summers, the schmooze, is our mystery guest for today. And, of course, Moose and I totally botched it, didn't get it. So Steve is putting on a voice, so we couldn't figure it out. And, Steve, the um, the New York Magazine article about you recently was really, really nice. I mean, that was, you know, to you said if you're just helping one person, and you're helping a lot of people, and I think that sort of – kind touch that you have all the time but especially now is really comforting for people and it's really you connect with the audience you have a very loyal audience but especially in times like this have you found that there's an even deeper connection between you and your audience well coming from you guys that means a lot coming from you maggie coming uh, from you mark that means a lot i mean i i think we all do that you know, and, and the way you're being very modest and giving me way too much credit. Uh, as I say, you know, it's uh, therapy for me, too. But I think what makes uh, all of us somewhat, and this is going to sound so gratuitous, but uh, they're on every program, well, I mean, again, I'm biased, so, you know, let's make that qualification, that disclaimer. But we all do that. I mean, we're a neighborhood radio station. We're local we're a neighborhood. We're talking to people who are like us, fans of the teams that we talk about, and 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 so forth. So, yeah, I mean, and late at night, it's a different audience, of course, than it is uh, during the day. But do you guys really entertain during the day? You really do. You you jump on every issue with the detail and minutia. You leave no stone, as they say, unturned. So it becomes a pleasure to listen to you two guys and making an impact right away, at least from what you know my two cents is worth and from what radio people tell me and contemporaries and colleagues and so forth and so on. So you, 
you guys basically do the same thing. We, you know, we're all touching on when are we going to have baseball and basketball and football and hockey. And the bottom line is we all want the same thing. We all want our games back. And we all have different approaches and different presentations. And you guys, you know, as much as all the other programs, too, cross every T and dot every I. So it's informative to me. I learned from listening to you guys. Take my word. And the bottom line is that, that the radio station, very much like the neighborhood, very much, uh, very much like the people they're talking to, and that's why I think, uh, the uh, well, let me put it to you this way. It's always been my dream to be here, and number two, to dream of working with the best, and uh, that's what we have at WFN. And I know it sounds awful. I know it sounds gratuitous, but that's really what I think. You know, Steve, and, and listen, um, you, don't, you don't take compliments well, right? You like to pass it off, but uh, clearly the connection you have with the audience is there and it's justified. How have you, you know, over the years um, in the different re- roles that you've had here at WFN, why do you think you've connected with the audience the way you have? I, I think it's simple. Please and thank you. Nothing, uh, nothing heavy at all. You know, if you, if you if you plan anything, you know, you hope to sell tickets when you get hired. And you hope that whatever it is you're doing, whatever your approach is, your presentation is, that it works. And who knows whatever is going to work. Otherwise, there wouldn't be changes in the kind of business that, that we're in. I think you want to be good. And I know when I am and I know when I'm bad. But I think more than just that. I think you have to be lucky, too, and I've certainly been that. There's no question about it, and I've been allowed to recover for all the mistakes that I've made or, you know, misspoken comments or wrong numbers or whatever it may be. So I consider it seriously so, and you're only as good as yesterday, so you want to be better today, you want to be better tomorrow and the bottom line is that, uh, again, and I've been around so long, I've made every mistake in the world, take my word. And that's not uh, false humility. It's, you know, it's there. I mean, I, you, you look at what you do. You try to check and balance what you do. You guys do the same thing. You guys care a great deal. That comes through. Uh, the, the passion and the interest and the work that you put in, the preparation that you put in, the research that you put in. I admire that. And I, you know, and I wish I had some of what you guys had, the, the depth of how deep you can go into an issue and that you can cover everything. I'm more like, you know, the lighter side, the headline side, the back page, the metaphor, the parody, the satire, uh, the sarcasm. And that's probably why I work. Because I don't think I can be as good as just about everybody else on the station who can go into all those details. So I envy what you guys do, and I'm glad that uh, I'm doing what I'm able to do. And I'm glad over the years, for good and bad, I've been able to sell a couple of tickets. <laughs> Steve Summers <laughs> is the schmooze, and he's our mystery guest for today. Uh, and Steve, your style is so unique. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure you could do your show any kind of way, but nobody can do the show the way that you do it. You know, it is it is a truly, it's uncopyable. Um, and because it comes from your creative mind, how long did it take you to develop your style? Well, the style's always been there. First of all, there's a lot of other people that don't do, want to do what I do. So, I mean, and that works both ways, too. See, I'm... I'm probably harder on myself than, than Chernoff can be, uh, because if, if I don't feel I've done what I do very well, I take it home with me. I, I suppose the style has always been there, I guess. Humor is, uh, you know, transcends age and decade and, you know, and time. If, if it's funny, it's funny. I, I mean, Howard Stern... Uh, uh, can, can be funny, and Seinfeld can be funny, and they're two different, you know, senses of humor. You know, it can be, and 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 really, I think I get by not with being funny per se, but being a little bit with a sense of humor and the give and take. And I don't feel much different than the audience. I'm a son of a grocer, 
I, I, I don't put on airs off the air, and I don't put on airs on the air. But the bottom line is that I think the style has always been there. I think I got lucky here because of the, uh, well, this is where I wanted to be, and I consider WFAN like working Broadway. And, and the first night I was on the air a long time ago, first night I was on the air, I said, basically, what I'm going to do, if you figure out the code of what I'm doing, we might have a good time. And if I get fired because I'm doing what I'm doing, it won't be because I didn't care, and it won't be because I didn't give effort. And so I'm most proud of that. Uh, I think my father, who had a great work ethic, he was a grocer, not very well educated, left uh, school early to help his father out as a butcher. And the bottom line is I always appreciated his common sense, which isn't so common all the time. And I appreciated more than anything his work ethic. And again, wasn't the most intelligent guy. And he has uh, he had a son that wasn't the most intelligent either. But the son knows that. I think, I, as I've said on the air and off the air before, I think what makes me smart is that there's a lot more I don't know than do. Well, I mean, you're great. I mean, you really are, Steve. And, you know, obviously you have a lot of fans. Talk a little bit about the bond, the friendship you have with Jerry Seinfeld. Well, uh, well, that was all by chance, of course. Uh, in the early 90s, it was 91, 92, or 93. I'm not really sure one of those three years. I was home on a Saturday night, wasn't married at the time. That station was only a couple years old. I had just gotten through watching Saturday Night Live. It was 1.30 in the morning. It was summertime. It was very hot. I decided to walk a half a block down from where I live to this bodega to pick up a pint of ice cream. There were only two other people in the store. Uh, and uh, including uh, the um, uh, and uh, including also the cashier, and one of them wearing a Met hat was very recognizable. That was Seinfeld. I didn't recognize who he was with. Um, a friend of his, another comedian by the name of George Wallace, near where I lived, there was a comedy club called um, Catch a Rising Star, and they had been in there. I found this out later. They had been in there. And then on the way home, over to the west side of Manhattan, uh, they had stopped in uh, at the grocery store. And, of course, they were in the cereal section of uh, the grocery store. So I did a double take. I did a triple take. I walked over uh, and said, excuse me, are you Jerry Seinfeld? He never made contact, eye contact with me. And I said, I just wanted to come over and say I'm a fan. And I don't do this. I didn't do it as a kid if I ran into a ball player in the parking lot. But anyway, I said, I'm, I'm a fan. I just wanted to say hello. He never made eye contact. I, the, I took out a card that I had in my wallet, and I said, I just wanted to introduce myself, and, and I work at a brand-new radio station. He took the card, still not making eye contact, looked at the card, looked up at me, made the eye contact and said, you are Steve Summers? He had been listening uh, almost since the beginning. That's awesome. Yeah, I know, all by chance, that's for sure. And um, and then he was calling in as Jerry from from Queens, and he co-hosted a couple of times, and uh, we emailed back and forth occasionally, not much of late, you know, his kids are older, and uh, he's involved in so many things. So, uh, But if, if, if the Mets were playing and the Mets were winning, uh, there's no question he'd want to come on, that's for sure. But he would come on your show. I mean, oh, and, and, and you guys, I think uh, I let Eric Spitz know before he left how to get in touch with him, and I think uh, there's been a couple of attempts. He's not easy, even when I attempted uh, to get him on, uh, maybe one out of every three times he would come on. But, I mean, a very nice touch. That is my brush with greatness. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly Seinfeld has impeccable taste. See? Yeah. You know, well, yeah, just... right, well, or he has no taste at all. But, no, but he found uh, WFAN interesting, and, you know, he began to listen to all the shows, too, and he was a late-night owl. And uh, that led to an interview uh, right after he first came on uh, with Larry David. And uh, Larry David was on with me one time. 
and so forth and so on. So, But there hasn't been much uh, communication of late. I know his kids are older. He spends time with them. He's got a million things to do. But if the Mets were playing, I'm sure he'd uh, want to come on. But listen, he would come on with you guys. I think he'd come on any of the shows in the in the uh, daytime, uh, evening. I mean, he was a big, big, huge WFAN fan. He like more more than others, but the bottom line is he listened to everyone because, as you guys know, it's not important whether you're loved or hated. It's whether or not you're going to be listened to, and that's the key. Schmooze, I got one more for you. Thank you for being our mystery guest today. We appreciate it so much. What is the, is the biggest way that WFAN has changed since you started? Well, I think yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I think, you know, it's over three decades, so you're growing up a little bit. You find out a little bit more about yourself a little bit. You become a little bit more confident. I never had great self-esteem uh, when, I, when I was younger. Uh, and, and I think failure in a career uh, are scars that don't always go uh, and disappear. And so you live with that. I, 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 I got, I've signed autographs, which is great. I've also signed unemployment checks. And you don't forget that. I mean, that kind of motivates you. You don't rise. You, you know, you want to move forward from all those things. But I would think, uh, not, uh, get, you know, getting older and, uh, and understanding myself a little bit better, understanding uh, human behavior a little bit better. I've learned a lot about human behavior, not only about myself, but, but the audience as well. So uh, I think it's a maturation project. Nobody really wants to grow up. You really want to just get smart, and I think I'm a little bit smarter. I had a long way to go to get smarter, that's for sure. But I think I'm just a little bit better of a person, per se, and a little bit more confident with what I do and a little bit more understanding of what other people do and don't do, if that makes any sense. No, it does, and and you are a good man. Final one for me, Steve, would be this. Um, spring of 94? Uh, you know, working at the fan, uh, most enjoyable time, you know, with the, the Knicks run to the NBA Finals and the Rangers winning the Stanley Cup into the early summer? Sure. Anything come close to it? Not to me. And uh, hockey would not be number one on my list. I was at Game 7 against the Devils at the Garden on a Friday night. Uh, it's probably I've been to Super Bowls. I've been to an NCAA championship. I've been uh, to an NBA championship, you name it. And uh, that game seven against the Devils, probably the most exciting game that I've ever seen in person. It was at the Garden, of course, on that Friday night. And it was just great. I would say right then and there that that, is, and also the Piazza uh, game at Shea after 9 11. Those two games right at the top of the list for sure. Well, Steve, we'll time to get, get the, the get, we'll get, let you go get, get the phone. Go get the other phone. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a doorbell. It's probably a package for the wife. It's nothing I buy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, I'll see they, you. They really All want right, to get it. Uh, thank Summers. you, Steve Summers. I think wow. Steve is gone. He just hung up the phone. <laughs> He's done. <laughs> you know, Schmooze is amazing, first of all. And Schmooze yeah. holds like a very dear place in a lot of our hearts. But for me specifically, he was the first person who ever introduced me on the fan. I was doing overnight updates. And Schmooze was like, gave me this very nice introduction to do my first update. And I thought, man, if I never do anything again in my broadcasting career, at least I have this very nice thing that someone said about me on the air and sort of encouraging me. And Steve has been encouraging this whole time. He's so self-deprecating and he, you know, he's a living legend though. He really is. And he's the nicest guy and just really loves the radio station and just is really, you know, wants everyone to succeed. And that's great. Well, right, and, and there's no doubt when I, you know, worked, um, and even to this day, you know, when when people find out where you work, um, you know, they ask you about summers, right? Yeah. Um, you know, Captain Midnight, you know, the fearless forecaster, you know, I, you know, during that era, why, listening to Steve overnights and being a huge Ranger fan, and Steve being a huge Ranger fan, the connection there, the second show that I ever worked on behind the scenes, first show was Beningo, he gave me the nickname Malus, uh, the Moose, right, yeah. off my last name. Malus. 
Calusis, um, you know, as he was watching a NBA game, Knicks game, eating Chinese food at the old Kaufman Astoria Studios because he said, I'm going to call you Moose. Is that all right? Yeah, Joe, whatever the hell you want to call me. That's fine. And then the second show I ever worked on was Summers um, and was uh, he's a guy that, you know, and he is attention to detail. Uh, if you're working behind the scenes with Steve, if he's got audio you want to play, you've got to hit it at the right time. There's certain things that Steve is kind of we talk about guys being you know creatures of habit. There's no doubt to a good degree because he cares passionately about what he does. He cares about the the fan that is listening and listens and takes care of the listeners. But second show I ever worked on and to meet Summers after listening to him my entire life and being a huge fan of the fan growing up, uh, it was an absolute joy. So yeah, and Steve's as good of a man as you'll meet in person. Yes. He's got great advice. We'll talk your ear off uh, to a good degree and you need to bounce something off of him, Maggie. He'll always be there to listen. <laughs> 